All right. Hey, everyone. Sorry for our technical difficulties, uh, but we are here now. I'm Libby Nath. I'm on staff with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and today we have turned the tables a little bit. Taylor McGregor, our FCA friend, field reporter for the Chicago Cubs, is now in the hot seat. So, Taylor, thanks for uh, coming back on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, apparently Instagram didn't didn't like our idea to go live. I don't know, it was one of those weird things, but I'm glad we could uh, use another form of technology and make this work. Shout out to Zoom, right? I'm grateful for technology <laughs> in this season. Exactly. So this obviously has been a really weird season, speaking of technology and being at home. Like, what's that process been like for you? Like, where were you when you found out about the stay-at-home order? <laughs> Yeah, it's weird for everybody. So I was down here in I'm I'm in Arizona right now and I was down here doing spring training for the Cubs when I found out and um the night before it was a Wednesday night and the NBA got canceled and so we were doing a game and I kind of had an idea that something was going to happen pretty soon and then I was at the airport in Phoenix actually going to Florida for the weekend because I was doing a conference in in Florida and so I'm on the plane and sitting on the terminal and I was like I need to buy wi-fi because I know this news is going to come out so anyways I was on the plane really when I when all the news broke that Major League Baseball at the time it was just pushed back two weeks um so I went to Florida and kind of was like what does this look like for me what am I going to do and um then decided to quarantine with my mom and we were in Denver and then we decided to come down here my mom has a, a house down here so we've been down here and um, for me, my main job is to do the game broadcast, and obviously with no games, that's looked a little bit differently. So the production crew at Marquee has been phenomenal. They've organized some new shows, and, and that's been kind of fun because you get to play around and be creative and do things that you never normally would be doing at this point in the season, but that's what we're all doing. We're kind of adjusting on the fly, and it, it's been fun um, in a way. Yeah, I mean, no games, no sports. I feel like I turn on ESPN and they're just digging for things to come up with, like, you know, soccer in Uruguay or something like that. But um, obviously sports have been a big part of your story and your life. Like, um, would you mind just telling us a little bit about, like, how you got to where you're at and what your story is? Yeah, I grew up in Denver, went to Golden, played soccer. Um, really, probably my first initial dream was to play professional soccer, but realized pretty quickly I wasn't good enough to do that. Um, and then wanted to be in the CIA, which is hilarious because it's like the complete opposite of what I'm doing now. Like you're undercover. And, um, but <laughs> eventually once I got to high school and started realistically thinking, what do I want to do in college? And then in my adult career, I watched a ton of sports and there were women on the TV who were the reporters. And I remember thinking, wow, that job looks really fun. I wanted to do something like that. Um, you know, Alana Rizzo was the reporter for the Rockies at the time, and I just remember admiring her. Um, Aaron Andrews was on College Game Day, and I love college sports, so I watch that show every Saturday. So um, had that goal, went to the University of Arkansas, was a broadcast journalism student there, and kind of always knew this is what I wanted to do. So after college, got out, worked in local TV for a few different stations, uh, was able to get the job with the Rockies, and then I was there for two years, and then this year the Cubs called, and I kind of decided that this was the right opportunity for me to take um, as the next step in my career. So I do this, and then um, some college football in the fall, which is, is a lot of fun. Awesome. And because of this quarantine, we get to have you on FCA, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, recruited you as a something. staff member. No, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys um, allowing me to come on. It's been a lot of fun to hear other girls' testimony and kind of what they're doing, what they're learning in this season. Because if there's one thing that I knew when this happened, I was like, I have got to come out better than I was before because um, I feel like there's kind of two things like you're either not going to be better and you're going to have wasted a bunch of time or you know you can kind of use this time in um, an unprecedented way and hopefully come out better on the other side. Yeah how are you using this time to grow and to come out better on the other side? What are some things you're doing? Well I love to read and unfortunately I don't prioritize that enough in my day-to-day -day life especially during baseball season because you have a game every single day and then you're traveling and it just kind of gets super crazy so um 
I've been reading a lot, which has been a lot of fun. And one thing I've tried to do is just keep a routine. Um, I don't set an alarm. <laughs> so I'm not one of those people who still wakes up at 7 a.m. I do wake up when I want to wake up. But, um, you know, make breakfast and then go on a walk and then do my quiet time and, um, and then go biking or, or go for a run or something, you know, an additional way to move later in the afternoon and kind of sticking with that. But also when I, when you talk about reading, like really trying to figure out what God's teaching me in this season of life, um, because, you know, we all know there's, there's purpose and, and God's not going to waste this time and he's going to teach us something if we're willing to listen. And so I've tried to listen and figure out what that means for me. Yeah, what do you feel like he's been teaching you in this season where you're supposed to be traveling with the Cubs and, and taking on the world and being stuck at home is obviously a little bit different than you expected, but what do you feel like he's been telling you in this season? You know, it's a great question. At first, it was, and this is something that be extended beyond just this whole quarantine. Um, I feel like God for a few months now has been like, okay, you have a lot of really good things in your life, relationships, you know, your job and, and the things you get to experience are all really good, but are they still more important to you? Or am I still more important to you than those things? Like those things are good, but sometimes I feel like Satan uses those as a distraction. Um, he turns things that God created for good into a distraction and therefore they can kind of become negative. And I never viewed any of those things as negative, but what was happening, it was, I was kind of becoming, those were coming, becoming an idol in my life. And I was letting those take the place of God in this, in the way of, I was looking for fulfillment in those things. And so I feel like what God now with all of those literally taken away, he's like, okay, so if all of those things never come back, are you going to be okay? And, you know, at the beginning of this quarantine, I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not okay. Like I need those things. And I, you know, that is, I love my job and I love all the experiences I get. And of course I love all my friends and everything, but um, I feel like the longer that I've gotten into this stillness, I've, it just has been so clear to me that, you know, Romans 8, when he talks about the mindset of the, if, when you focus your mindset on the flesh, like you're going to experience sin and death. But when you're, when your focus is on the spirit, you're going to receive life. And that has been so true for me in this. And I feel it in days when I don't spend as much time in the word or I'm focused on, you know, the what ifs or what does this mean for my job? And this, 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 I can kind of get down a spiral of negative thoughts. And, and it's truly like the sin and death that is talked about in Romans 8. And so it's a really long story short, you know, I just feel like God is trying to make himself king again in my life. And so I, I'm really thankful for that. And um, hopefully, like I said, um, by the end of this, I can look back and be like, wow, I'm so thankful for this time and everything that I've learned. Mm, that's really good. I just read those verses this morning, actually. So it's Isn't that crazy? interesting. When, to... I feel like that happens when there's, it was like a resounding theme. And I feel it in like what I read, I'll be like, that's weird. I just read that. And then somebody preached on that and somebody mentioned it. And like, it's crazy how I read that and you read that, you know, it's like, God, I mean, that's such a God thing. Yeah. I mean, it's of all the verses in the Bible that that's a theme. And I, I love how you said, Taylor, that idea of making him king because he is the king, but how often do we get distracted and we take him off of that in our lives? And, um, and I think, you know, it's important to go back to our roots of like, you know, when we first became Christians or at the basis of like, man, if we don't have Jesus, we are brought by sin and by death. That's the direction we're headed. And that's what's running our lives. But that's the beauty of Jesus and the beauty of the cross is he offers us that life and that forgiveness if we repent and turn to him and and acknowledge the fact that he's king because he's king whether we acknowledge him or not so i love the way you phrase that that like when we acknowledge that he's king and put him on the king of our life and how important that is and i think for me it's one of those things and i've realized this about myself over time is you don't realize the way you're living like if last summer you would have asked me what's the most Important thing to you. I would say, well, absolutely my faith and God's the most important thing. But 
in in now in this quarantine when those things are literally stripped away you realize wow i placed so much value in that and that truly was an idol in my life and i didn't even realize it and so um I just think it, that's what's been cool about realizing, I've always said, you know, God is king and, and he's the king and Lord and my savior. And, but I wasn't necessarily living like that in my thought process and the things I was thinking about on a daily basis weren't um, reflective of that. And so it's been cool that he's truly shown me um, some of the sin in my life and allowed me to repent of those. Yeah, it's crazy how we're in this time and things seem so off, but maybe there's things God's trying to teach us that if we weren't in this season, we wouldn't be willing to hear. But because we're in this season, our hearts are willing to hear it. He's teaching us things that if we were in the day to day, we wouldn't have picked up on. Exactly. So, well, Taylor, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and to share a bit of your heart. It's just cool to see what God's doing in your heart through this season and encouraging to me, I know. And Hope all of you guys that are listening have appreciated it as well. Um, Taylor and I wanted to let you know that she's going to be back next week. Uh, she's going to be interviewing <laughs> Sally Higgins, who's the assistant women's basketball coach for the Samford women's basketball team. So she is a stud, got some great things to say. And also, if you guys comment on this video, uh, you will be entered to win a $20 Chick-fil-A gift card, right? The Lord's Dinner right there. And so, all of Chick-fil-A. Give me all the Chick-fil-A. It is survive, helping us survive this season. God bless Chick-fil-A. So comment on this. If you tag a friend, you get an additional entry. And next week when Taylor and Sally are chatting, they're going to announce the winner of that. So make sure you comment on this, tag some friends, and then tune in next week, uh, Thursday, same time, 3.30 for a ladies' timeout. So thanks, Taylor, for hanging out so with fun. us today. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy that crazy. sunshine. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's nice to here. So, but this only lasts so long, you know, it might get a little hot. So appreciate it while it lasts, but thanks so much for having me. It was fun and it was fun to switch sides for a little bit. So. Absolutely. Bye Taylor. Bye.